as we're talking about programming and we sort of move away from the idea of data and data collection and analyzing the data, we start moving into that idea of prioritizing. Like which are the aspects of the uh, concepts here that are really going to be the driving force? All of them are going to be important. You, you know, every project needs to have an idea of the scale and the budget and uh, you know, how things are going to be organized and what the you know, general directives are. But the question is, which are the key ones? You know, if, you're, if you have to give up something, uh, usually you're going to go back to the priority list and make sure that the high priority items aren't giving anything up, but then the lower priority items, maybe those can be uh, given up a, a little bit here and there. So. Uh, Every time you're doing a program, this idea of the priority is always going to sort of come back to a same similar grouping of lists uh, of issues that uh, become important to think about. So one we started to talk about was the idea of circulation, and this has to do both with that organizing principle, but also with the idea of wayfinding. So let's say, for example, hospital project that we're doing. Uh, well, it may be really important that it's not just circulation, but in fact that circulation is all about uh, the idea of uh, service to the customer. Uh, and so the circulation is we're, we're bringing people in, we're moving them through and into the right position and into the right place. There's very little confusion. They feel good about being at this particular hospital, right? That can be really important in that scenario. Whereas in another scenario where um, you know it's a small office that people go to every day over and over again, really wayfinding, wayfinding is not going to be that big a deal as part of that discussion. I may still think that the circulation is important because maybe the circulation speaks to uh, the way that I have people meet each other in informal ways and you know uh, in the kitchen break rooms or in, in, in the hallways in the sort of lounge spaces, things like that because I want to have them uh, if I'm the client, I want to have them uh, talking to each other in informal ways because hopefully that's going to help them be better employees, right? So I may still be uh, interested in the circulation system without really thinking of it as a wayfinding system. So you're like you're figuring out well which is the priority, which what are the things we really want to get out of this, and you're starting to get very specific about it. Is there a hierarchy? Is it very clear what that hierarchy is? Is this a very corporate structure and you want to really emphasize that because that's how you get the best uh, employees, the best talent is you, you know, you give them the corner offices, so you know you got to have a bunch of corner offices in order to be able to do that. Um, so kind of are we reinforcing a hierarchy or is it all one big open space and really that's the whole like everybody keeps talking about we're all in it together and we're all here in this one. Well, that that's an important idea that is saying this is a priority for us. This isn't about a bunch of corner offices. This is about us all being in that same space. So uh, you're figuring out what the priorities are so that you can then use that when you're designing later on. A key concept that shows up an awful lot is the idea of the front of house versus the back of house. This is the, there's a bunch of parts of a, any office or even residential or any kind of project that uh, are really sort of the front face, right? So the reception and the, the main sort of administration and, and all of the sort of, sort of kind of the front, what we face out to the public. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff that's sort of not really meant to be uh, seen by the public. So maybe the facilities department or something where they're kind of in the background and they're making things work and they're, they're uh, you know, making sure the building's functioning. They're keeping the mechanical system up and running and they're getting the loading dock uh, schedule worked out so everything can flow quickly and easily. Right? That's not something that you need to necessarily see when you're first coming in the building as a potential customer or something. So uh, being very clear about this idea of the front of house and back of house, it's not going to matter for a lot of people, but for some projects it's going to be really important. Right? Is that a priority? Is that something do we start thinking about as different floors? Is there a clear wall separation? Is there, is there uh, a finish type difference so that you know, there's a sort of clarity to, to this as a process? So just sort of that kind of level of understanding, once you start breaking things down in that way, it becomes clear how to set up the priorities, or at least it can get clear how to set up the priorities. What is the idea about efficiency? You know, I just mentioned earlier the idea that you know maybe some places want to have that big open space and they have a lot of lounge space so that people can sit and discuss you know what they did over the weekend because maybe that actually somehow becomes useful information as they start becoming better and more bonded to each other and so they become better employees or or small side pieces of information become useful in later discussions. Uh, 
Well, it's hard to say that that, that extra lounge was actually efficient, right? So is efficiency important? Uh, that would be something you would be, you know, prioritizing. If it's super important to get as many people in, like I said, maybe it's a call center. It's all about the numbers, right? Can you fit as many people in as you can and still have it be safe and reasonable and uh, acoustically separated? Uh, you know, all right, that's all about efficiency. But in other situations, the idea of efficiency can be a much looser term, right? This is where we'd be talking about that. There might be aspects of the systems that we would want to prioritize like uh, the way that the circulation and the systems for the heating and cooling work or the idea that we're going to have a, a certain kind of system that's going to run around the perimeter and it's going to create a sense of coziness of warmth in the winter or you know this, these ideas that that could have sort of importance beyond just sort of the simple straightforward uh, sense of just meeting a code right these might have m a much higher level of uh, priority and importance uh, structural systems, are we trying to, you know, be dramatic and structural and have, you know, 50, 60 foot clear span spaces so that people bustling around, you really feel the sort of excitement of that? Uh, or uh, does it not really matter and we're really just going to go with the most efficient system that's going to work for the steel or work for the, for the concrete? Uh, do we want to be expressive? Do we want to have an industrial look? You know, like what are the kinds of things that are going to be important to get across an idea for how we can design later? The whole thing that you're really doing here is you're creating a narrative. You're telling a story and the story is what is this project? Uh, and I, again, I don't think anybody at NCARB is going to use the word narrative in this context, but I think that's a useful way of thinking about it. The program is a small story. I start off with some goals and ideas. Uh, I go through a bunch of little details of the story that, that make it so I understand and the, the importance and the reality of these key pieces. And then I come back at the end and I kind of wrap it all up, right? It's a, you're telling a story so that everybody else at the table, your team, the client's team, all can have uh, the same uh, basic idea about what's uh, going to be happening as you move forward. As part of that narrative, you can't really get away from thinking about the budget. The budget has to be part of the program. That starts with how much money the client has available. It starts with, uh, you know, this is how many people we need to fit and this is how much room each of them will likely take up and therefore our project is a certain size. You know, what's the likely cost of something that's that size? So you're coming at it from both ways, like what's the project need, but also what do they have? The reason that's such an important conversation to have at this uh, programming level is that uh, if you don't have it now, well, you're going to have it later on after all the money's been spent and you want to have it now. If you find that uh, to fit all those people in, it's going to cost a million bucks, but what they think they're going to be spending is 600000 you need to have that conversation right away. Otherwise, that's going to be a big problem. So uh, you're really, it's really important to make sure that the budget is a clean and clear part of this whole programming uh, and priority thing because the budget is how you're going to say, yes, the circulation and the hierarchy are what's really important to us, really setting that tone. Well, that's going to say that we're spending money on that is what we're saying, right? So uh, when we talk about prioritizing, we're actually talking about money. And often, in order to really understand whether it's plausible for it to work or not, you're also putting together a pro forma. That's not usually what the architect does, um, but somebody is putting together a pro forma, a developer or some, uh, somebody involved in the process. Uh, and the pro forma needs to know the costs in order to be able to make the pro forma make sense. Right? So all of these things are, you're putting together all this data, you're putting this all uh, in, a, in a process to tell a specific story in order to know what to design. In order to know what to design, you need to know how much things are going to cost so you know whether you can afford it or not.